how to deal with that challenge to be in that very intense contact with the world out there, one that is influencing your children the whole time. How having children brings to the surface all the patterns in which we are submerged on a collective and personal level. And how to better see what is needed in the developing of one's child at their own particular phase. Extraordinarily important question. And of course, it's like tempting to say, welcome to the club, being a parent myself. Um, actively involved in bringing up three kids now at the very same time and I have a grown-up daughter um, who is now 32 um, there is no such thing as um, You see that that reflection, what you have spoke, spoken about here, already has a certain degree of some kind of predicament which is not a predicament in the first place. It's a predicament, it becomes a predicament because we are faced with this ourselves. We're faced with this. We're faced with this, what somehow begins to look as a predicament because we never bring up children. This is already a, a kind of a, an illusion of what is actually uh, going on. <laughs> children bring themselves up. I know it sounds completely bizarre and almost maybe uh, flippant and phantasmagoric for some of you, but the truth is every one of us comes into this world with our own duty, uniquely carved out in consciousness for us, which basically carved out by our own very selves, and doesn't matter what we have for them, they came here to fulfill that very purpose of why they are here and just temporarily uh, happen to be uh, known as our children. I mean, the legendary Khalil Gibran poetically, beautifully, and very, very profoundly spoke about that. You may want to refresh. I'm sure you must have come across of these passages that, you know, your children are never your children, nor do you own the children. These children come through you into this world. They have destiny of their own to fulfill. So best we could do here is simply, simply give them the possibility of expressing themselves in a way where they are always loved, no matter what. The ultimate lesson of life is to, re to end up in realizing that all this is in the name of love, for the sake of love, and love all, all there is. Everything is then a degree of variety of this perspective, that perspective. Sometimes it's lovely to get in, engaged in a doctrinal, philosophical discourse. But when it comes to the matters of the heart, and that's what children are, children is that what the heart is. The heart of every true parent is where his children are, right? That saying is that the mother always knows where her children are. The mother knows. And this is, the mother knows, is a very profound, very profound meaning. So this is what here, really our role and job. Nothing we can do. Yes, of course, we are in an open battle for their sanity, for their ability to feel this world and not just bypass this experience because we are have fully entered that digital age. Every parent of those whose child whose now have children who are approaching or fully in their teenage kind of phase, 
uh, have this dilemma. All of us are united by this dilemma. This is the world of current unfoldment. There is a possibility that many children will never truly grow into their emotional maturity because they will be digitized in terms of their relationship to the world. We don't need to have chips implanted into us as in some of the uh, Netflix series or um, um, HBO series. We don't need to have all these sci-fi kind of dramas where you can have, you know, James Bond or like Jason Bourne, or kind of, we don't need that. We know that the whole generation in Japan already has a specific, unique Japanese term for kids who are completely and utterly sucked into that digital sphere of the internet and don't want to live out of their rooms and live real life. They have no interest in real life. It's a phenomenon, a cultural phenomenon. I'm not making something up. Look it up. Japan is the first country which has acknowledged it with applying a certain term for it already. They are dubbed with that word. I forgot it at this very moment. So yes, there is this danger. There is this, all of us parents uh, trying to resist that, trying to keep tap on how and what and what have you. But at the end of the day, very little we can do except doing what we can in a given moment because sooner or later that, that wave will take them over. They will be galloped down, they will be tumbled down and they will have to reach out up to take the breath of their own to rebirth themselves if they want to live real life, if this is what they meant to experience. So the parent here really is the one who has to reparent oneself first and foremost. And I'm sure you have heard me saying this at a certain point a few years ago, that term has been introduced into our work along with other um, necessary aspects under the category of emotional introspection. Reparenting oneself is what I would say the most successful strategy and the most successful way to influence and impact our children. Because if we are emotionally undeveloped ourselves, then it doesn't matter what kind of clever games we want to play with our kids. A, they see it through, and B, it doesn't rub off. Because they see all the bullshit and they're also very, very sensitive in terms of what is real and what's unreal. So there is no um, way out of that what is here constituting the foundational ground for living a happier life. Uh, of course, that, uh, again, old age dilemma of what will constitute that happiness for our children. That if we provide them with care, great education, um, you know, open their awareness to multiplicity, open their awareness to the ways of how they should be aware of this and that, not having these forbidden territories and areas which will be then discovered by them, often at the expense of being harmed in the process, all goes, of course, uh, and forms that part of what the educational uh, aspect of being parent is. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you want, if you have to, if you're pushed to make a choice between IQ and EQ, I would say settle for the EQ because the emotional intelligence is by far greater asset for a happy life or even successful life of everyone, anyone, than being smart, clever, but at the expense of 
not being emotionally developed enough. You see? And that, that in turn, is related squarely, diametrically, to what we just now uh, brought to your awareness as necessity for reparenting yourself. So what I want to say actually is this, in a plain language. When we have children, we actually have an opportunity to grow into a greater adults ourselves. That's what it is. Having children is uh, taking the adulthood onto the next level. You see? That's what having children is. Some of us may remain these playful little toddlers or teenagers for many, many decades, not even knowing that. And this is a, a calamity for, uh, for society that they... How immature many of us are, despite uh, very good educations without really displaying a lot of that intellectual maturity and so-called decision-making, we're so clever anyway. But when it comes to the matters of the heart, we are like completely um, still walking as apprentices. So reflect on that, and this should uh, open up a, a, a greater area for you to release also that uh, unnecessary burden uh, that what it means to be a parent. Yes, it feels as a burden. I'm not going to lie to you. Because there is a constant responsibility. Constant responsibility. But you have to have that or take that with a pinch of salt. Because they all have destiny of their own to fulfill. And they will, irrespective of what we may have in store for them, or what our aspirations might be. So that trust, mutual trust, creates a greater bond. And of course, we should not cease from exploring with our kids, exploring areas which seems difficult, which seems as um, controversial, which seems like at times that, oh, we cannot always come as all-knowing parents. Sometimes we have to take a reversal role and allow our kids to reflect some of that portion, maybe, for the benefit of our own reparenting and growth.